thee king over Israel, yeah. and I delivered thee up the head of Saul. Excellent. And I gave thee thy master's house mm. and thy master's wives into mm. thy bosom, mm. and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have, mm. I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Mm. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Mm. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, mm. and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Mm. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thy house, mm. because thou hast despised me and had taken the wife of Ariah the Hittite to be thy wife. Mm. Thus says the Lord, mm. Behold, I will raise up evil against thee of thy own house, mm. and I will give, and I will take thy wives before thy eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, mm. and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. Yo. For thou did it, for thou did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. Yo. David said unto Nathan, mm. I have sinned against the Lord. Mm. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Hey. How be it because of this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also mm. that is born unto thee shall surely die. Amen. Um, amen. And then, more about the them oh, go down with it. I'll sleep. finish it. After that, 15. Yes. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David mm. fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. Hey. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. Mm. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. Mm. And the servant of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, hey. for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. Mm. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servant, mm. is, is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and mm. came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Mm. Then he came to his own house when he when he required. They said bread before him and he did eat. Mm. Amen. Amen. So I'll happily yes. finish it. Yes. And he said, while the child was yet alive, mm. I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me than the child that the child may live? Mm. But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him and he shall not return to me. And David com comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went into her and lay with her. Okay. And she bore a son and... Amen. Amen. Yeah. We just wanted to have some at our heads and so I'm Hallelujah. So more like it's a beautiful example of a blessing of a child that you have that did not come from God. Amen. Because how about from the manuscripts it said and before this one? The Bible says that Banana never to live at Vaila Conte. And you know, David was rooming around in his roof, in the roof of his palace where he was staying. This is where he saw Bathsheba Akuka bath. And the Bible says that he lasted over Bathsheba and then he called his servants to go and check who that woman is. And the Bible says that he brought the woman to him and then he slept with the woman and uh, oh, you know all these things then they happen then the bible says that later on and they told him that this is Uriah's wife you know and he knew Uriah and the bible says that then what after a month the woman sent a message to them to David to say I am pregnant now and the bible says that David tried to to sugar cane you know to cover up by trying to send Uriah back home has to no when it let him say they are pregnant Uriah at last come and the bible says that Uriah did not go home he stayed where all the men were and 
until such time now, when David sees this, the Bible says that he called one of his servants and said, they put Uriah in the front line when you go for a war and leave him there alone so as the, our enemies can kill him. And the Bible says that Uriah died under the, you know, the, the, the instruction of David because he, and I, he was trying to cover up his mess. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says that now when the child was born, this is where God is calling uh, his, his prophet to go to David, Nathan, and speak some word to Nathan. And the Bible says that Ha'ata, he came with a, you know, a parable and he narrated the parable to David and David said, no, that man must be killed. Show me. And then Nathan says that you can read it uh, just in the few verses before then. And the Bible says that when David heard an uh, you know, the parable of a man who was doing injustice, you know, taking from another man. He was like, no, that man must be killed. And then Nathan said, that man is you. And then the Bible says that he started to, uh, opening his eyes like, uh, what do you mean now? Hallelujah. He started now looking at uh, uh, the whole issue like, what do you mean it is me? And the Bible now says that, the, the Bible says that this is what Nathan said, that this is what you have done. I have, and God is saying to you, I gave you, you know, I anointed you a king over my nation. I gave you the wives. I mean, I didn't even give you one wife. I gave you wives. Hallelujah. Okay, I will lock you in as you come in. And the Bible says that, he says that, I gave you wives. I gave you all these things. And actually, if you needed more, I could have given you even more than what I had already given you. But then the Bible says that, and then you went and you go and fornicate with this woman. You take someone's wife, you put them in your sin secret, and you sleep with them. You fought, you know, you corrupt somebody else's who has a wife. Well, no one is doing anything to your, your wives. We see from here that God does not like all these shenanigans that some people will do and think that God will approve. Hallelujah. I can see you are all back. Hallelujah. Excellent. So the Bible says that he then... Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says that now, he then told him that, what I am going to do, David, to you, you took Bathsheba in secret, you slept with someone, and you put their husband on the front line to be killed, and then uh, what I'm going to do to you, I am going to allow your wives, you know, to be taken by people on daylight, on daylight that everyone will see your sin out because you sent in secret, but I am going to expose you. But the Bible says that David went before God and he pleaded with God and he asked for forgiveness. And the Bible says that he did forgive him and say, okay, I will remove the sin, but the child will die. Hallelujah. So the child Yena was going to die anyway. So what does that tell you? It tells us when you have received stuff and you receive them in not a good godly manner, when things are happening to the children and the Bible, the Bible says that David and Bathsheba's child fell sick for seven days. And then on the seventh day, the Bible says that the child did die. So what does that tell us? It tells us, Hurim, uh, mute there. Mute there, Kathy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us, Hurim, when you have received something, and that something that you received, you know that you did not receive it the right way. You should, you know, there were shenanigans that were done for you to get that business. There were shenanigans that were done for you to be married into whatever that you are married into. There were things that were wrong that were done for you to be... Hallelujah. I am back on. I can see some. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us, when you have received stuff and you receive them 
the wrong way. When your child is dying like the Shunammite child is dying, died, and yet yours is dying also, like David's child was dying. The Bible says that the child was afflicted with a sickness that lasted seven days. And during that seven days, the Bible tells us, Hore, Hore, Gatejo, meet. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, Hore, Hore, in that seven days that, you know, the, the, David's child was going through a sickness. David went to fasting. In Bible, he put, you know, uh, whatever, you swell and whatever he covered himself. You know, he took Molora and put it upon himself and he went out. He did not eat. He did not drink. He was just crying before God and praying for God to heal the child and the Bible says that on the seventh day the child did die as God has said it should die and the Bible says that Hassan and Mbaduzi you know the, 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 the leaders they didn't know how to go and tell him that you know the child has died the Bible he saw them whispering this is when he asked him is the child dead they said yes and the Bible says that he woke up you know stood up from his torn clothes you know and he went and he took a bath and then he brushed his teeth I guess he went and to the, onto the table you know he dressed up nicely he went onto the table and he said Batum, bring some food and he started eating when his uh, you know uh, elders they thought that actually he was probably going to go on a suicide spree now, what does the Bible tell us about this? It tells us, Horeng, when you have received a business, not in a godly manner, when, when your business is dying, let the business die. You know deep down in your heart that for you to get to where you are now today, when you receive Christ, that you are flourishing when you receive Christ, but you are not flourishing in godly, in a godly man. You know that people were killed. You know that things were dying. And you know that wicked spirits were called for you to get to where you are. Now that you are in God, when this business is dying, you need to be like David and let it die and let it go. If God does not save it, then let it go. Hallelujah. So you cannot compare the child of David to the child of the Shunammite. We also have to be authentic people. We must know in the core of our spirits how we received certain things. Hallelujah. So it means that if you got a job by sleeping through, you know, many people to get there, and now you are in God's sphere, and the job is in jeopardy, you are about to lose it. Lose the job. Let it go and go to God. Because the thing is, when you take this filthy thing and you place it before the bed of God, it will die because it is not a godly thing. It was never received in the right manner. So this is why David. He says to David now that what you have done now, what you did, you caused the Lord's enemy to lose respect for him. This thing that these shenanigans that we are doing, they are causing the enemy of God to lose respect on God. And that, that is the truth even today. Because we see today that there are people who don't trust in God anymore. There are people who don't respect God. Because of what? Because of these people like, you know, who have received success in the manner that David did receive it like here with Orias uh, a, a husband, a wife, you know, out of fornication, out of adultery, out of wickedness and lust spirits. Hallelujah. So the thing is, now, today, we unfortunately, many Christians don't know how to respond the way that David did. The Bible says that David knew what he had done. So it does not mean that it is the end of the world for you. Let that thing go because that thing did not come in a godly manner. But that thing is not the end of you. God, the God that you, you know, you serve will open a new a new success that you're supposed to have that one have things that will make God people God's enemy 
family to lose respect for him because of the things that you are you they know how you achieve them they were there Hallelujah. So it's like today we see you all now receive a Christ and you are thanking God for this wonderful work that he has given me. But the thing is, there are people that know what you did and they were part of that thing that you were doing for you to get there. How do you think they are going to respect God? Hallelujah. So when God allowed that thing to go through jeopardy and you are losing it, let it go because it was never received on godly backgrounds. So it is not the same as the Shunammite boy. So this Bathsheba's boy was not the same as the Shunammite boy. So the Shunammite boy, you, you take him back to God and expect God to be God. Hallelujah. Now, Kirata David, because when that thing happened and he did all he could, like any parent, like any person will do, after you have done all you can to try to save whatever that you wanted to save, to try to save your car from being repossessed, to try to save whatever, you know, as, as even today with the, the, the quarantine and, and, and the, you know, the, the COVID-19 stress that it has built to some business and you are praying before God. You know, you are losing certain things. You are really praying before God, but they are not coming through. If you know the roots of those things and you know deep down in your heart, you don't even need a prophecy. You don't need a prophet of God to come and prophesy and say, thou says the Lord. You know, you know, you know what you did. Now, turn around, don't go, don't try to act like a Shunammite baby, you know, a Shunammite woman's issue. When you know that your issue now, it's a David and Bathsheba's issue. But Rata Mudimu, because God says that even David, after he had done all of that, when he came before God and said, I have sinned, I'm sold. The Bible says that God did receive him back. God did forgive him. Because even today, the same God is still saying eh, the same thing that when you come before me I will forgive you and I will justify you and wash you by the blood and then you will be good again you will be great again but the consequences will not go away hallelujah that is why even when you are pregnant you come before God and say I have sinned God will forgive you but the baby cannot disappear you will still have to find ways of buying diapers for the baby you will still have to find ways of you know so it's go your life somehow will be affected because when your peers are finishing at school and they are starting by buying things that are materialistically to the, towards themselves you will have to first start thinking about the crutches and thinking about this and this before your time. But the thing is God here now, he will wipe away the sin. So you, the guilt will move away from you. You will lead a good successful life. But that thing will still be there. Hallelujah. So this is exactly what happened even to David that God says, yes, I have removed the sin, but the child must die. The child will be taken away from you. Hallelujah. And you will go through that pain of losing that child because of what you have done. So <laughs> we learn also that when things did not come from God, when you take, when they are, you know, because now you are in God. Now you are in God again. This business, you got it while you are still in the world, doing the worldly method, using the worldly method. Now that you are in God, when this business is going through a trial, is going through a headache, you will take it to God. But the thing is, when you put it on the bed of the man of God and it continues to die, what happened to this boy doesn't happen to yours. Be like David. Let it go. Hallelujah. Let it go. And the third thing that we see the Bible say this woman did is that she shut the door. Which means that she trusted now God for this boy, dead boy, that something good will come. Yet yeah, she expected the baby to be alive. So she put the baby there and she shut the door and say, there is no way that God will give me something. And then turn around and take it back from me. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that when she was 
shutting that door. It, it symbolized that she trusted only God as far as that issue was concerned. So we must also now learn from this woman that after you have placed that thing, especially the one that you don't know why it is happening, the one that is happening, it is unfolding in your life. You can see the headache developing. You see the headache, you know, worsening, and you are seeing the death, hallelujah, of this thing coming from the headache that you don't know where it came from. Now, you need first not to put your mouth on it. And number two, don't go to places that, you know, you do not know. The places where God, you know, that, that is ungodly. The places where you did not receive that thing. But now, Number three, go to the place where it came from. Take it back to God. And then shut the door, number four. Leave it there and leave yourself out and shut the door. Let God deal with this issue. Hallelujah. Let God, trust God that God, when he gets involved in this thing, it will be done perfectly more than if I take matters on my hands. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible, the first response of this woman, she trusted God. And the Bible says that she locked the door, you know, she closed the door and she moved away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we see that. And because of that, now we know the end result. That something, of course, did happen which was great. Because God always says that he wants us to trust him. You know, in the, in the Bible, when you read, God wants and he moves, especially if he's going to move in every sphere. If you are going to succeed wherever you are, you want God to touch every, you know, every area of your success. This time, you don't just want to succeed in one thing. You want all your spheres to succeed. Then you will have eventually to come to that point where you will trust God to be God in this thing. Hallelujah. That is why a man after my heart. Because the Bible says that when, when before he became king, when Saul was looking for him, the Bible says that there was a time when God gave Saul to him. And the Bible says that Saul went into a cave without knowing that, you know, David was in there. And the Bible says that the people that were with David, they gave him an advice and said to him, wow, the scripture that says, you know, God will bring your enemies right before you to, you know, it is happening to you now, uh, David. Here is your enemy. Go and finish him. And the Bible says that David refused. He said, no, I will not do such things because this man is anointed of God. And the Bible says that you must not touch the anointed of God. Even when he is doing wrong, he is still anointed. And the Bible says that David went and cut, you know, a piece of, 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 of Saul's uh, garment while he was still doing the relieving himself, doing number one or number two, whatever that he was doing. And the Bible says that when he gets out, then David asked him and say, look at this. And when he looked that this person could have killed me, he knew that David truly and surely was, you know, the anointed of God, was a man really after the, the, the heart of God. So, Rilena, in today, we learned that we, he, he let God to deal with Saul. He did not want his hands to be involved in the dealing of the person that is anointed, even when that person was in the wrong, like Saul was. Hallelujah. Now, we see that, you know, as far as this issue was concerned, David decided that I will shut the door and let God deal with this. And we know from the New Testament, Testament. The Bible says that, you know, God, that, that God says that it is for me to, you know, leave a revenge to me. It is for me to avenge because it is only when God is paying a revenge on something that, you know, you, you will still be standing. That thing will be revenge, but you will also be still standing and alive and healthy and well. So we leave all these things to God. Hallelujah. So today, if you are going 
going through something that you don't understand while you are going through this thing. Don't put your mouth on it, you know, prematurely. When God had not, you know, show you that this thing is happening because of one, two, three. Don't be a suspicious mind type of a child of God. God wants us today. We are going to pray even today. If you are having that suspicious mind, that God, you allow the Spirit of God to come and deal with you. Because probably it is may it is there in your life because of the betrayals that you, you know, you suffered through your life. Obviously, you never fully recovered from them. And God can restore you back to what he wants you to be because you cannot function you know well when you are a suspicious woman when you are a suspicious man when you are a suspicious brother you are a suspicious sister when I had in Todu the first thing that you think is that people wants to kill me the first thing that you think you know people wants to bewitch me but you don't think first about the power of God that rests upon your life Hallelujah. So we are going to pray then you that God will allow you to cut you off from your past betrayals that you suffered because that is probably one of the reasons why you are being this suspicious person. And also number two, that God will deal with your issues of trust because obviously you don't even trust God that he has best intentions for you. You always believe that God will just let you be in harm's way when you are a child of God you are washed by the blood you are loved by the almighty God how can you think that you know he will take care of the, the, the birds you know that don't even have know how to come back to him and say thank you yet he will put you on harm's way without any you know any way out at all God does not operate like that Hallelujah. But yet, somehow in the back of your mind, there is a demon, you know, spirit that is telling you, you know, a wicked, a spirit, spirit. So, Sebel and so, Jesang, Hore, Mudimu, how rad. That is why when things are happening to you, the first thing you think is that they are there, they are happening for you to destroy you for life. Because, Honale, message your Satan. When God has spoken words to you that you will succeed wherever you go, when God has released an anointing upon your life for you to succeed in all seasons, out of seasons and in seasons, in all situations, out of quarantine and in quarantine, in health and out of health, He has released a spirit that will help you, you know, manifest himself in you to help you to succeed in everything that you do as long as you are with him and we know him the bible says that he is a faithful god he you know he wants to see that everything that he has spoken come to pass and he is faithful in all times that is why the bible says that also he never allows us to go through things that he knows that will kill us so why do you not trust him why do you have a mind that tells you that you know whenever things are going wrong it is probably your end day hallelujah but when you are covered with such love you are covered with such power hallelujah so we need to 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 deal with the spirit if you are going through if this thing is happening in your life know that that suspicious mind does not come from god it is a suspicious mind that comes from the devil it wants to destroy you because then it will lead you to put your mouth prematurely on your situations and Speak them in error. Hallelujah. Now you will end up being like Job's friends. Hallelujah. Now, and also it tells us, Hore, we must learn to go before God. When, you know, when this woman was telling, putting this thing on the back of the woman, uh, uh, of the man of God, he was, she was taking the issue back to God. Go back to God and let him tell you what is the problem. Unless he has shown you what is the problem. Don't take matters into your 
your hands and start killing people and start destroying people and start destroying your relationships in a way you are destroying your life at the end of the day you will find yourself standing alone because of the things that came from your mouth And then the only people that you have around you, they are also people who are like you. Suspicious suspicions. That's what you have in common. How are you going to succeed? Because people who are like that, they will never succeed because somehow they think that things are not working in order for them, you know, in the good of of them. Things are always working against them. It is an evil, you know, suspicious, wicked spirit that comes from the devil that you need to shut out. And you need to forgive those also that have put you into that path. If you have been betrayed so many times in your life, now the first thing that comes, it means that even when you receive Christ, you have not fully allowed the new creature to exist in you. Because the Bible tells us that when we come to him, he makes us anew for, you know, former things, supposed to be former things. They are not supposed to come and show their heads in your present and in your future. They are going to destroy you. So you need to work, you know, on them and restore and, and, and destroy them all together. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray for these things. We are going to pray for whatever, you know, blessing, whatever success that God had given you that is undergoing an attack today. As we are saying that, what do you do when your success territory is going through an attack? We have seen how this woman handled it. And she handled it and she got the beautiful, you know, uh, wonderful after uh, effects and results. And I believe that God is not respecter of a person. As the Bible says that whatever that he can do for one person, he can also do it for you. So we are, we need also number one to understand that sometimes just because God has given us the success of a certain thing, you know, there is this miraculous thing that happened upon your life. Don't ever think that the enemy will never try to try, you know, and destroy that. We must always think and always know that the enemy can always try, you know, to to destroy, try to make things, or, or, you know, allow things to work against us. And try to make us believe that God did not really give us what he had given us. So be like this woman. I can see some, there's a a connection problem there happening. I tried to solve it, but I'm not. But we are going to pray, Bazalwa. And I also want to to encourage you, if you are a, 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 a child of God with a suspicious mind, that you allow God to deal with these things in you. Because then they are going there are the reason why you are not succeeding in certain things because you are your own enemy you are blocking things you know speaking ahead of things and you know doing things the way that God did not do you you, they they sort of open up a wound or a hole for the devil to come sneak into your life and start destroying things around you so that is why today you you know you trust nobody You don't even trust God. Hallelujah. You trust nobody. You don't even trust God. Even when God is talking to you, you are still suspicious. Even when God wants your attention by allowing certain things to happen to you, he wants to bring you that you will remember where this thing came from and went back to him and say, Lord, oh Lord, there is no way that you will give me something and let it die. What comes from you, Father, has a seed that is, you know, uh, uncorruptible. There's a seed that's supposed to grow. What happened, my father? And God will show you what what happened. God will lead you into the the, the path, the right pathway of you dealing with this thing. If it must start again, he will start it in you and it will prosper, you know, like Job did. The Bible says that his latter life was better than even what he used to have. He lost a lot, but because it was in in God's hand, the Bible says that he blessed him even tenfold, you know, more than what he used to have. 
And even more importantly, I believe that now Job and his friends and the people around him, they knew that it was possible to love God the way that Job did. Now everybody understood that it is really possible to lead a Christian life. It is possible, do you know? Hallelujah. To read, to, to receive and, and, and to lead a life that is worthy of the gospel and, 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 and have the presence of God in your life the way that God wants us to. Because the Bible did tell us when God was making hell, he had no man in his mind. Hell was meant for the devil and his fallen angels. It does not please God when a human being is going to hell. So go back and restructure your life. Go back to your relationship with God. Because this year if there is anything that God has constantly and constantly put a stamp on it was that we need to assess our relationships with Him. We need to have our quiet times with Him. We need to talk to Him. We need Him to speak to us. We need to listen to what He say. The relationship that is genuine. That is what God wants. Because when you have that, even when when it is quiet, you will know that it is quiet. I don't understand. But one thing that I understand is that he called me for a purpose. He is the God that will never leave whoever he has called, nor forsake whoever he has called. He is with me. He is right here with me. I may not even sometimes feel the good bumps around my body, but I know that the presence of God is with him, and I trust him. I trust him even for this issue. I trust him for my life. I trust him for everything that I have. I know that he has good plans for me. He has good plans for my future. Plans to give me a better future. Here on earth, even when I die, in heaven, he is preparing, he is busy preparing mansions for someone like me. Because he loves me. He wants me to be with me, with him in the heavenly realms, in the name of Jesus. So I pray today that whoever is listening to this, if you are going through any of these things, begin to go to God and begin to speak to your God and begin to re- you know, rebuild your relationship and your trust with Him. If there are issues in your life that are causing you to be a suspicious person, deal with them authentically. You know, be authentic about it. Be, don't try to sugar chain yourself. That is why you are not going anywhere. You know, you need to be authentic with him. Have him deal with your your past such that your past is not clouding your future as it is and clouding your presence, uh, uh, present as it is today. Hallelujah. And when what, whatever that we are going through, we become like this Shunammite woman. We don't lose our relationship with God. We continue to love God because there is power when you love God. The Bible says that to them that love me, I come and I manifest myself. Jesus is coming to manifest himself in your situation. There is no situation that is too hard for God. That is the devil's ministering to you, telling you that he cannot with this one, but I can tell you today, there is no issue that is too difficult for God to can solve in your life. There is no business that God cannot resuscitate as long as it is built on good things. And if it was built on wrong things, let it go and trust Him to bring up something in you that is Him, that has the DNA of God, that will be able to withstand whatever flood that it may come. Know that He still loves you. The same way that he loved David after he went back to him and said, God, forgive him. So he will forgive you too. He will give you a new future that has his signature in it. That you may then succeed wherever you go. That you may then succeed in all things that you are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Basarani, we are thankful. I'm going to pray now, and I hope that you will also pray for yourself. Come on, amen. So let's continue now. Uh, we are going into pray. 